good morning to everyone today. Um, I want to take some time this morning and give out some service notes um, and uh, directions that we'll be following as a congregation. Um, So the elders met Thursday and we had to make some decisions. The elders had to make some decisions. And I want to give those decisions out uh, both on the air uh, here and to the people seated here this morning, uh, especially because I was under the impression I sent uh, a very nice email out that apparently went to no place but the church office. So, so uh, having said that, um, we've got some directions. Uh, we're going to do our part inside these walls for the tier three mitigations. And I think everybody's well aware of the fact that uh, the hospitals are filling up. There are problems, not only in our community, but our state and the nation. We can only do our little part here inside these walls. And these are the parts that we are going to do. And these will go out later today uh, or tomorrow morning, also in the form of an email. This is kind of our action plan in light of the tier three mitigation strategies set forth by the governor of the state of Illinois. Um, The the plan, the mitigation plans did not specifically address worship services. Um, And so we're kind of doing the best we can with the information that we have. So first of all, we're going to continue to have the same Sunday morning series of worship in the same alphabetical pattern. So continue to worship in the same way that you have uh, these last couple months. And we're gonna do this, these things for the next 30 days unless otherwise notified. Um, we're gonna really have people come 10 minutes before the service starts. So plan your arrival you know, for 10 minutes beforehand. Uh, that is first service and second service. I'm going to ask, I know I don't have my face covering on. I'm trusting that I'm far enough away from everybody else. Um, but we're going to ask that everybody to wear their face covering during the service, in the entire service. Um, and just like we did in the spring when we were under these mitigations, uh, at the end of the service, I'm going to go out the side door, and the elders are going to usher people out from the back you know, from the back, starting with the back pew to the front pews. And just please exit the building without a lot of congregating around. As you can tell, we're going to suspend communion for uh, a while. If you um, do or would like to receive the sacrament of the altar, please call the church office, call myself um, for scheduling a Uh, private communion. We are going to try and sing the liturgy this morning. I don't know how this is going to work through our masks and everything. We're going to try and sing the liturgy, but what we're going to do with the hymns is I'm going to, at least for this Sunday, I'm going to read through each hymn, and then Dora is going to play the hymn, and while the hymn is being played, then uh, don't sing, but maybe sing in your mind uh, or follow the words along uh, thinking about the words of the hymn. I know I find myself, since I don't read music, um, I say a lot of words, but I'm not thinking about the words when it comes to, to hymns. So this is an opportunity to really consider and ponder Uh, the words of the hymns that we have before us. As far as Thanksgiving Eve and midweek Advent services, right now we're just going to have those online. And so 6.30 for each of those, 6.30 Thanksgiving Eve, 6.30 Advent services uh, will be online services at 6.30 on those evenings. Uh, The adult Bible class, we won't have adult Bible class tonight, correct, Ron? But... Adult Bible class will be, again, online um, next Sunday. So I ask you if you want to tune into that. Rod and I will be hosting uh, that adult Bible class and, and leading that from, from online. Um, the first Tuesday of the month high-risk communion service, the one that we've been having, 
uh, we're going to suspend that for the month of December. So there will be no high-risk communion service. And the elders plan on meeting on December 10th to decide the course of action for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, uh, depending on how things are, are going and what information the civil authorities put out. I know that's a lot to digest right now. As I said, I thought I got that all emailed out. Apparently I didn't. So that email should go out later, later today. So what I'd like to do right now is in, invite you to turn in your order of service to the opening hymn. And I'm going to read the opening hymn first and then Dora uh, and our musicians are going to play it. Come, thou almighty king, help us thy name to sing. Help us to praise, Father all glorious or all victorious. Come and reign over us, ancient of days. Come, thou incarnate word, gird on thy mighty sword, our prayer attend. Come and thy people bless and give thy word success and let thy righteousness on us descend. Come, holy comforter, thy sacred witness bear in this glad hour. Thou who almighty art, now rule in every heart, and ne'er from us depart, spirit of power. To thee, great one in three, eternal praises be hence evermore. Thy sovereign majesty may we in glory see and to eternity, love and adore. Dora, if you would play through those stanzas. Greetings in our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to the November 22nd worship service at Zion Lutheran Church, Lincoln, Illinois. Participating in production of this broadcast are Bill and Diane Breen, Brian Featon, and Ken Richard. Marlon and Kathy Rose are sponsoring the flowers on the altar to the glory of God in honor of their 60th wedding anniversary. The family of Robert and Wilma Miller are sponsoring the flowers on the stand to the glory of God in honor of Robert and Wilma's 60th wedding anniversary. John and Kathy Beaver are sponsoring the radio broadcast today to the glory of God in thanksgiving to God for his many blessings. Our organist is Dora Thompson. The opening hymn is number 905, Come Thou Almighty King, hymn number 905, found in the Lutheran Service Book. Let us rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O 
O Almighty God, merciful Father. I, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to God on high. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Please be seated for the reading. The Old Testament reading for this, the last Sunday of the church year, from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, the 34th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep and have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, Thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust all the weak with your horns till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set them, I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The catechetical review. In regards to baptism, what does such baptizing with water indicate? It It indicates indicates that that the old old Adam Adam in us should should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all all sins and and evil desires, desires, and that that a new man should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and and purity forever. Where is this written? St. Paul Paul writes writes in Romans Romans chapter 6, We were were therefore therefore buried buried with with him through through baptism baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the the Father, we too might live a new life. The epistle reading from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, beginning at the 20th verse. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjugation under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Alleluia. Holy 
the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who you cursed into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when? When did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick in prison, and did not minister to you? And then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. now confess our Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe, I believe in one, in one God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only, only begotten, begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended, and ascended into, into heaven, heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he, and he will come, come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. The sermon hymn is in number 845. For today, I read through these hymns several times Verity to myself out loud in the office and so on and so forth. And it is a good exercise that when we sit in the pew before the service starts to look at the hymns and use them as prayers, use them as meditations, preparing ourselves uh, for the service. The hymn of the day is where charity and love prevail. 
and uh, kind of dovetails very well with that gospel reading. I was sick and you took care of me. I was hungry and you fed me, so on and so forth. Where charity and love prevail, there God is ever found. Brought here together by Christ's love, by love are we thus bound. With grateful joy and holy fear, his charity we learn. Let us with heart and mind and soul now love him in return. Forgive we now each other's faults as we our faults confess. And let us love each other well in Christian holiness. Let strife among us be unknown. Let all contention cease. Be God's the glory that we seek. Be ours his holy peace. Let us recall that in our midst dwells Christ, his only Son, as members of his body joined. We are in him made one. For love excludes no race or clan that names the Savior's name. His family embraces all whose Father is the same. The sermon text this morning is the gospel reading for today, that the King will return. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ of God. Amen. (laughs) 
it seems like we're hanging on the edge of everything right now. Especially, well, really in the church year. Next week we begin the church year over again. And the cry will be, the king will come. The king will come. We've already said in the church year that we're in, not only the king will come, but the king has come. And today we close the church here with the cry, the king will come again. And I found myself wondering, what does it mean to have a king? We say it. We sing it. But I think for us it's exceptionally hard to fathom, to wrap our heads around what does it mean to have a king, one person at the head who you look to to take care of everything, whose responsibility it is to take care of the mental, social, emotional, physical, spiritual well-being of, of the entire people. And I thought, you know, let's think about the kings that we see played out for us in in, in movies and plays and all of that, and they're never portrayed very well, so we often have this very negative image, I think, of kings, maybe unless it's King Arthur, but even so, there seems to be a negative image of kings. Because most uh, kings are literary foils, examples of debauchery and ruthlessness. And we even live in a time, we live in, 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 in a country where we refer to each person being the king of their own castle. You know, your home is your castle and you're the king of your castle. We bow to no one and we consider ourselves to be the authors of our own good. So this idea of a king is, is really hard for us to grasp. You know, I've, I've, you, you wonder, what was it like before electricity, before television, when families and extended families and clans gathered around the hearth or the campfire or whatever it was to tell stories of the past, when people really and truly were connected with one another. Uh, even though we're super connected through uh, the internet and our large groups of media, we're also exceptionally isolated from one another in what we share as our common bonds and our common history. I wonder what it was like to tell those, those stories. You know, um, I always imagine um, Longfellow Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. To, to memorize things like that and to, to tell them, to pass along a national history, a family history, all of that. What was that like or what would it be like? Because right now, in our country, we seem bent on destroying it. Bent on destroying any attempt to to. exalt our national honor. Instead, it is fashionable now to tear everything down. Thursday is gonna be Thanksgiving. Heard anything about the pilgrims? Nope. How dare we bring something like that up? Gone and lost are the pilgrims. Gone and lost are Daniel Boone, Davy Crockett, Francis Mary and George and Martha Washington. Our ancestors are seen as thieves and pillagers to the extent that I would guess that even John Henry, that steel driving man, is shameful for his larger than life story is the story of the Transcontinental Railroad. But I ask you today to gather around 
gather around because we do have a history. We are a people. A people whose family line was thought of before the foundations of the world were laid. We are the people whose true home was set in place even before God spoke the words, let there be. Your heavenly home was put in place. Do you ever think about that? Before the foundations of the world were laid. You were thought of before creation came to be. This is part of who you are. It moves and twines in and through all of us, in and out. Drawing us together as a people. This people who we are. We are a people whose redemption was secured before our creator said, let there be. Listen. Listen. For the word was spoken, and all that is came to be. Life and light and joy and happiness. And mankind, our first parents, Adam and Eve, walked in true harmony with the Creator, with our Heavenly Father. And then came that rebel Satan with his mockery of the word. Did God really say? Came the temptation twisting what God had put before his creation. The father must have been hurt when humanity was led into rebellion ourselves and he was wrathful and the serpent, that murderer, was cast down into the dust. Down! On your belly you shall crawl all the days of your life and dust shall you eat. And to the people, pain you will have in bearing children. And from the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food all the days of your life. And yet, that isn't the end. That isn't the end. A promise was given to the woman that one from her seed would crush the serpent's head. Yes, Man would eat his meals from the sweat of his brow. Yes, death came into the world when Adam and Eve sinned, and it would take death, one particular death, very special death to overcome our death. Listen. Listen. And wait. Wait came the word. Wait is said of the redemption to come from God's anointed son. Then came Abraham. For in you, God told Abraham, all nations of the world will be blessed. And so we waited. And we waited. And our ancestors waited. And our families waited. And all humanity waited for the king that would become a poet, warrior king. A king stronger than strong. A king strong enough to wipe free the stain of rebellion. And we would sing, Come thou precious ransom, come. Virgin son, make here thy home. Marvel now, O heaven and earth, that the Lord chose such a birth. The Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin shall be with child. And she will conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. In time marched on, and time marched on, and then on one peculiar, particular day, the angel Gabriel appeared to a young maiden named Mary, and she would become what we call the Theotokos, the mother of God. And one night in a stable in Bethlehem, the Savior was born. And the angels rejoiced, Behold, unto you this day in the city of David is born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And suddenly a multitude of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth to men upon whom his favor rests. Glory to God in the highest. The king has come. Veiled and hidden, but he had come the king who was strong enough to let us live, 
He was strong enough to be weak and strong enough to give his life as a ransom for many. His redemption is our family's life. For though he died, he did not stay dead. He rose and we confess that he ascended into heaven. And from thence he will come to judge both the living and the dead. The king will come again. The king will come, and today in our scripture reading, the king himself describes his arrival. Once he did come in weakness, next he will come in power. Once he came resistible, the next time his coming will be irresistible. And he will return with the shout of the archangel and the trumpet blast of heaven. The king will return in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, and the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we will be caught up with them to meet him in the air. Legion upon legion of angels will attend him. And he will be seated on his glorious throne, and every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. And the redeemed shall stand on his right hand, and the damned shall stand on the left. And the redeemed shall hear these words come. You who are blessed by my Father, receive the inheritance prepared for you before the foundations of the world were laid. For I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in chains, and you visited me. I was lacking clothes, and you clothed me. I was hungry, and you fed me. When, O oh Lord, comes the answer? For he is our Lord and our King. When, O oh Lord, comes the answer? When, when? goes the cry. Whatever that you did to the least of these, my brothers, says the king, you did to me. Good works do not earn our salvation. Good works are the evidence of our faith. We are Christians and we bear the name of Christ. We do not bear that name because we earned it. We bear that name because we have been adopted. We bear that name because that name was given to us. We do not bear that name because we are so good, but rather, on the contrary, we bear that name because good was done to us, and we did not reject that good in unbelief. Brothers and sisters in Christ, dare I say, We're all having stress. We sit around, not just elections and news and coronavirus, but everything that's going on, everything. And our backs hurt and our necks hurt and our brains hurt. But look around you. Here in the pews, across your radio, across your computer screen this morning. Look in your mind if you sit by yourself and see by faith just exactly the things you don't see with the eyes that are in your head right now. Look at what you don't see, and what you don't see is what you really are, and that's royalty. You are royalty, each and every one of you a royalty in God's eyes. You are the royalty of heaven. And as the royalty of heaven, we come to understand, and gosh, it's hard. It's hard when you're raising a family. It's hard in every facet of life. It's hard because we want to put ourselves first, but we got to understand this body of Christ how we treat one another is how we treat Jesus. 
And that's important for us to understand. And the commandments of our God and our King tell us to think of others first before we think of ourselves. And we understand that putting others before self flows from faith in Christ and therein lies the crucial difference between the goats and the sheep. Between the redeemed and the damned. The damned can't think of anybody first but themselves. The goats, those cast in the lake of fire, say darn near the same words to Christ as you will say, but they say him in a challenge. They say him in a challenge. When? You tell me when I saw you, and then maybe I'll believe you. They do not speak like you and I speak when we are dumbfounded on that day, saying, I don't remember when. Can you tell me when? Oh, do you notice they acknowledge him as Lord, but they cannot say king. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, because God will be shown forth in his glory. They must say Lord, but they will not acknowledge him as their king. When you tell us. You prove it. They did works, yes, but works for the glory of self, not for the glory of the king. They can never say with the psalmist, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my Lord. They would rather have their name on the house of God. Away from me. They will hear the words, away from me. Be cast into the lake of fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For you would not have repentance and faith. And now the way is barred for you. Would you? You will be at the right hand of God. Why? Because of the very words you confess today. I am a poor, miserable sinner because you understand confession and absolution, because sinful though each and every single one of us are, we really do struggle and strive to put others before self. We may fail, but God won't remember that on that day. He will remember the blood shed for us, the blood that washes us. He will remember us in Christ. You who acted in faith, you who changed diapers in faith, you who will aid persecuted brethren when you can, you who are the ear to bend and the arm to lean on, you who labor unseen and yet not unnoticed, unthanked and yet not unthankful, you who do without thinking but not without thought, you who put others before self precisely because Christ put you first and your faith is in Christ. Then come. Come, for no sin will be charged against you. Your sins are forgiven. Come, for you have been invited to the wedding feast. Come and receive the garments of the king. Come this day and find out who you truly are. Come and receive the inheritance prepared for you before the foundations of the world were laid. For you are the daughters and the sons of the king. Behold, the king will come. The king has come. The king will come again. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Amen. Now may that peace which passes all understanding be in your hearts and minds through the one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. This morning let us rise as we sing the offertory.
please be seated as the organist will play a small organ interlude this morning after which we will rise from prayers. And also please uh, remember, I hate to do this, but as things are drawing down and not as many of us are coming to the services, and rightly so, I understand, uh, please remember to send your uh, offerings into the office. You have been sharing in the morning worship at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street in Lincoln, Illinois, where you have just heard Reverend Mark Thompson deliver the message for this morning. If you cannot be physically present, join us every Sunday morning on the radio at 8 o'clock over WLLM 1370 AM or WLLM 105.3 FM or on Facebook Live or on the Internet at www.zlclinc.org. Zion services are also available on Cable Channel 5 and on the LCTV app on your smartphone on weekends at 10 and 5 and on weekdays at 8 and 5. Zion is a member congregation of the Worldwide Fellowship of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. If you are without a church home, we invite you to become a part of the Zion family. If we may assist you in any way, please call us at 732-3946 or write to us at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street, Lincoln, Illinois, 62656. Zion also offers a premier education with a Christian worldview for children from age 3 through the 8th grade at Zion Lutheran School. For more information concerning our school, please contact the school office at 732-3977. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. Let us rise for prayer. Gracious and loving King, who will see our works of faith and make your judgment public on the last day, grant that our lives reflect the love and forgiveness you have shown us. May we live with one another as the hymn writer declares. Forgive we now each other's faults as we our faults confess. And let us love each other well in Christian holiness. The strife among us be unknown, let all contention cease. Be yours the glory that we seek. Be ours your holy peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Almighty God, the effects of the global pandemic are indeed increasing in the nation and in the world. Prosper, we pray you, the authorities' mitigation efforts, the chemists' and scientists' vaccine efforts, and each person's efforts of personal responsibility. We pray for all those suffering the effects of the coronavirus, asking that as Jean and Karen Burwell and their grandson struggle with the effects of a positive diagnosis, that their health and their strength would daily increase, and that they would emerge healthy and strong. We ask you, O oh Lord, to hear our prayers for all who battle this infection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. As we, your creation, battle the pandemic, O God, the other effects of the fall into sin have not left us alone. We pray for all those whom we know who are sick and hospitalized. Especially this day, we ask that Bob Miller find relief for his hip ailments and a physician that can help him. 
And Lord, there are indeed many more than are hospitalized whom we name in our hearts and in our minds. Those who are sick whom we now silently name before you. Heal them, O Lord, according to your will and grant faith to those who cast their cares on you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, through the creation of Adam and Eve, you instituted and blessed marriage as a holy estate. This past Friday, Bob and Wilma Miller, and also Marlon and Kathy Rose, each celebrated their 60th wedding anniversaries. Thank you, Father, for the years you have given to these couples, and as the years have passed for the opportunities to show Christian love in both sickness and in health. Grant unto Marlon and Kathy and Wilma and Bob each to be examples to their families of marital love and faithfulness. These and all other petitions we bring before your throne of grace and mercy, praying the prayer your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, on earth as as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, as as we forgive those who trespass against us. And And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee his peace. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. But when I thank that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on that cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation, take me home. Joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Please be seated. The closing hymn is number 801, How Great Thou Art, hymn number 801, found in the Lutheran service book.
Please remember, we'll be ushering you out from the back of the nave to the front of the nave. Um, and 6.30 on Wednesday evening for online Thanksgiving Eve services. And hopefully you can have the best Thanksgiving you can have. Depart in peace. Amen.